Hello, and welcome to Marvelous Meals. My name is C.B. Sobolski, and I'll be your host. I'd like to welcome you into my kitchen and to a seat at my table, where myself and comic creators from around the industry will explore the inspiration and influences that got us into the comic book business. Today, I've prepared a three-course meal, which is Spider-Man themed. Aunt May's wheat cakes, Web of Spider-Man pasta, and a special Spider-Man dessert as we talk about Spider-Verse, Marvel's mega event that takes every Spider-Man from every part of the universe and puts them into one amazing story. Join us, because you're not going to want to miss it. So, for today's appetizer at our Spider-Verse dinner, what I'm going to be making are Aunt May's wheat cakes but I'm gonna be doing it with a Japanese twist. In Japan, they have a dish called okonomiyaki. Okonomi means as you like or what you want. Yaki is grilled. So basically it's a grilled pancake which you can put in whatever you like. In this case, I'm gonna be putting in cabbage, I'm gonna be putting in scallions, and I'm gonna be putting in pork. And then I have some super secret toppings which are very important in okonomiyaki that I'm gonna add a Spider-Man twist to that hopefully you'll really enjoy. So first, what you do is just like if you're creating a normal pancake, you need your flour. What I'll do is start with one cup of whole wheat flour. Next, we're gonna add in three quarters of a cup of water. And then we'll crack in two eggs. So once you got a nice, even batter that's not too clumpy, start putting in your savory ingredients. Drop in about half of the scallion that I chopped, and then about half of the chopped cabbage. So we start with our flat top, pop on a dash of olive oil so we don't stick, and then we get our batter. And like we said, we can make these any shapes or size we want. Uh, what we can do is now add toppings as we like uh, on top. I have some uh, thin sliced pork belly that I'll be using and uh, layering that on top of each pancake. So just like a topping on a pizza, and away we go. Basically just like a pancake, you want them to get golden brown on the bottom. These have been on for about three, three and a half minutes now the flip. One, two, three. Woohoo! There we go. Now we let those cook for about the same amount of time. They should be ready. We'll dress them up in a second. Okonomiyaki is usually always topped with something called okonomiyaki sauce. So what we do is, first we'll top it with okonomiyaki sauce. Take a quick cooking paintbrush, spread that around so it gets all around the okonomiyaki. As this is the Spider-Verse dinner, as this dish is inspired by Peter Parker, I wanted to give it a little Spider-Man touch. I wanted to add decorative webs using the mayonnaise cake topper, which will come out simple. All right, let's plate these up and we'll start eating Aunt May's Okonomiyaki wheat cakes. The basis for this was I tried to create each dish around something related to Spider-Man. And this is related to, of course, Spider-Man's, uh, Peter Parker's favorite dish, wheat cakes, when he was growing up. So instead of making wheat cakes for dinner, I just decided to put a little savory twist mm. on it. Mm. Oh, that's good. Your tagline that you guys have been using is, every Spider-Man ever. Mm -hmm. Like literally, every Spider-Man that's ever existed is going to be in Spider-Man. We, we've gotten the ability to use some that have never appeared in Marvel Comics before, mm -hmm. like uh, the 67 cartoon with the Bakshi cartoons. So what's the total count? How many actual Spider-Man oh did we God. get into? I think between the main book and a couple tie-ins, we are over 100 at this We're point. Over 100. Oh. Um, and there's a couple new ones too, oh, right? We're, we're it's classic we're, and there's new ones. We're creating new ones. One of the spider, one of the spider people that we've just created for this has totally blown up and taken off, and everyone loves it to death. Gwen Stacy, Spider-Woman. Now, Spider-Gwen, as she's known online, she, she's blown up. She was the one bitten by the radioactive spider in her universe, and her story is a very sad one. Peter Parker didn't do too well in her uh, universe. All these new characters, all these classic And all these characters. edges Spider-Verse issues, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. are, are standalone, right? People yep. don't have to know anything about Spider-Man. They could pick them up yep. fresh. They could go in. New characters, origin stories, tell the full tale in, in one issue. Leading Absolutely. into to action Spider-Verse. Oh, you guys give me one sec. You can yep. keep chatting. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go and uh, work on course two. Ooh. Oh, my eat. God. Course one is amazing. <laughs> this is. is delicious. Back in the day, uh, a phrase called Marvel style was coined. So Stan Lee, who wrote a lot of the seminal Marvel stuff, kind of the godfather of Marvel comics, worked with incredible artists like Jack Kirby, Steve Ditko, John Romita, um, Senior. Senior. 
and they would talk over a story, and then those artists would take it and they'd, they'd draw the pages that they discussed in the story, and then Stan would script it. Now, Dan is one of the few writers left alive. No, <laughs> one of the few writers still writing Marvel stuff, so he'll write a plot that still gives you a you know, page by page breakdown, often panel by panel, but it doesn't have the final dialogue because he likes to see what the artist brings to the work. And then he'll write his dialogue based on that and his captions and all that kind of stuff. In and a very speedy fashion. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. All right, if I can cut in from the kitchen for a sec, ladies and gentlemen. Please do. <laughs> Course number two, Web of Fate Pasta. Oh. Tune in next time as CB and his guests dig into the cast of Spider-Verse and their main course.